thank you very much for your time. So let's start this interview. Uh, yeah. Already my new album. <laughs> Everybody has it already, except for myself. <laughs> Why not? It didn't arrive. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody um, has it, yeah, the band, uh, the manager, the fans, uh, the press. I am the only one who doesn't have it. The <laughs> Holographic uh, Principle album uh, had a complex uh, lyrical team. Those Omega in, goes in the same way. Um, what's the main theme of this new album? Yeah, the main theme is the Omega Point theory. And that's the theory that we are fated to swirl towards one point of unification. And uh, from there on, there's many other sub-themes, but this is the, like the red line. And um, the, the, what, what we want to say with that is that we are all connected. We are all one. Uh, everything that once was connected, uh, so like with the Big Bang, everything was like, poof, exploded in the universe. Everything that was once connected always stays connected. So uh, that in the end, that now we have a feeling of duality, but in the end we will swirl together as being one again. And um, yeah, there's many sidesteps on the album with, uh, with, with other uh, ancient wisdom teachings. But uh, yeah, the, every song has, has their own theme, but this is kind of the main theme, what keeps everything together. All right. Uh, and how the, the pandemic situation changed the, the writing process and the recording process of this album? Yeah, the writing process, not at all, because uh, everything was written and, uh, uh, before the pandemic. And the recording process went pretty smooth up till one point. So we had uh, recorded like 80% of the album and then the pandemic uh, hit and then uh, we couldn't record anymore the voices of Simone and me in the studio. So I recorded my, my vocals at home in my home studio and Simone, she recorded, uh, she, she booked a new studio close to where she lives in Germany and she recorded there with, with the producer being on Skype available as well. And then they were sending files by the internet and once they had a good setup with the room and, a, and the right microphone, then everything went smooth for her as well. It was just a, a matter of testing some microphones, seeing wh which microphone would work well with the room that she had there in that studio, the specific studio. Uh, but when, once that everything was set, then it went uh, really well. So it was just mine and Simone vocals in the end that were having some difficulties due to the pandemic. The band thought about hold the release of this album until the pandemic is over or or not? No, I, I didn't want that. Uh, and most of the guys didn't want that because uh, you can maybe wait forever. Uh, nobody knows how long this is going to take. Uh, uh, it can it can be over the end of this year. It can also that it takes long, much longer. And then if it takes much longer, you, you keep waiting with an album that's already finished. And then after some years, <laughs> it doesn't feel like your new album anymore. And it's an old album already. So, and, and that being said, I also think like uh, people now are in need of music. I hear many people, they love the, that the album is out now because everybody goes through some, some hard times some, somehow. Uh, so some are suffering from this situation of the pandemic, some are suffering from another aspect of the pandemic. But everybody is, or basically everybody, not, maybe not everybody, but most of the people are suffering in a way. And uh, music can help them at least to to bring some happiness. So I'm also happy that uh, even though we cannot tour right away after the album, that at least the music can bring happiness. And that's also a very important uh, aspect for me. Well, uh, Mark, you are a guy totally into death metal and we can listen to Omega even more than the previous albums, uh, I yeah. think. Uh, this death metal influence came mm -hmm. on purpose or it just happened on Omega? Um, yeah, the, the, we all basically all of us have a back uh, background in, in death metal. Uh, uh, personally, I was uh, raised uh, and, and listening to death metal when I was a teenager. And uh, for example, uh, Isaac and Aryan they played in Gotti Throne, which is a death metal band. 
So we, mm -hmm. we have a lot of guys with, with this background in the band. And uh, uh, so it happens automatically. It's not that we think about it. It's just the, the, the music we like. And I think, yeah, if you would leave all the orchestrations out, you would uh, have a lot of death metal oriented music left. So, um, yeah, it's just the music we, we enjoy. <laughs> well, my next question was exactly what you said. Uh, Isaac and Arian play at boats in God on it. And yes. Arian, I think they play with Aborted as well, uh, some live shows. Yeah. And uh, my question was, uh, their background help it in those brutal parts? Yes, uh, yes, that surely helps because uh, this, uh, this, this background, everybody's background is, is important in the music of, of Epica, but because they have this, this death metal background, it uh, also, especially when you take Arian, for example, he has this really robust uh, death metal or approach in, in drumming. He's like a machine. And uh, so we are really happy with having him on board because there was there would be many kind of songs we could not play if we wouldn't have such a drummer. So with, with this guy, you know that everything we do on the album, we can also do live because he can re reproduce it uh, very detailed live. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's very important that we have them and, and very happy that we have them. In the Brazilian version of Omega, here is it again. <laughs> <laughs> EP came as a bonus CD and I I'm reading you know the credits and mm -hmm. I didn't see your name there you didn't record it, the, the acoustic tracks yeah I was in uh, lockdown at that po point I live in a different country and uh, when we were going to record the acoustic tracks uh, I was in lockdown I was not uh, allowed to leave my house for two and a half months and uh, I did the uh, arrangements for the acoustic tracks, so we worked on it by internet but when we were actually having to record it, I couldn't couldn't go. So I was a bit sad about that, I must say. Uh, when you see the guys recording and, and yourself are in lockdown. <laughs> but yeah, that uh, with this pandemic, uh, you have to make things work the best way. And uh, I was happy that at least I could be there when the album was recorded. That was the most important thing to be there. And um, so, yeah, uh, I trust them also fully. So when we had all the arrangement discussed, then I know when they record and uh, that was going to be fine. Um, but it was have, would have been even more fun if I could have been there myself as well. But uh, yeah, with this pandemic, uh, shit happens. <laughs> <laughs> An Epica store was open here in Brazil uh, at the Galleria do Rock in São Paulo uh, this week. And yeah. was the band directly involved in this action or? Yeah. Band? Yeah, they were asking if it was okay, and we, we got pictures if, uh, if it looks good, and uh, the banner was discussed, and uh, yeah, so we are involved in these kind of things. Uh, I know that this is a very uh, important place in Sao Paulo, where a lot of metalheads go, and uh, that it looks good, it's uh, for us also uh, important, and uh, uh, yeah, so it's, I'm happy that the, the, the pop-up store uh, was opened, and hopefully many people still buy the physical CD because at, especially at this point where bands cannot play live shows, uh, our all, only income is now from the CD sales. So uh, every, every CD that we sell, it's, it's, uh, it makes a difference. All right. Well, talking about uh, physical CDs, do you buy CDs? Do you still buy CDs? Um, I only buy CD when I want to support the band. It's not to to actually play it. So it's like to more to have it. So I, I buy, for example, sometimes vinyl. I don't play it at all, but it looks very beautiful and it supports the band. So uh, I, when I play music, I usually do it by uh, Deezer uh, because I have an abonnement on uh, on my phone with T-Mobile and I get uh, uh, Deezer in the abonnement. So it's uh, for me the, the most easy way to listen to music nowadays and um, I, actually in the car I still listen to CDs because I have an old CD player in the car <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's play a, a quick game I will show you some CDs I selected here uh, okay. and you tell me if you like this one and okay. if they influenced you in some way okay, okay. yes yes first you yeah that's a uh, Great band, first of all, but uh, I was more the kind of Iron Maiden guy. So uh, I didn't li listen too much to Judas Priest. Of course, Painkiller, this kind of songs, they are 
really big hits and uh, that uh, I play them as well. But I, I was more the, 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 the collector of Iron Maiden, so to say. <laughs> well, my, it's my favorite band, Iron Maiden, so. Ah, <laughs> cool. That's cool. Well, the next one, Napalm Death, Utopia Banished. Yeah, that's that's of course the brutal uh, death metal uh, part, and we play it often in the tour bus. After uh, when we are on tour and we we want to really have a cool uh, party going on, we we play this kind of music, and then especially Aryan, the drummer, he starts grunting very loud <laughs> and uh, keeping everybody awake. <laughs> but you play in the in the sound check or in the or something like that. Yeah, sometimes we also play uh, this good old death metal bands in the sound check. Depends how much time we have. When we have a lot of time, we start fooling around and then we, we play some covers of uh, death metal bands, yeah. Nice. This one, I know you really like this album. Oh, yeah, it's one of my uh, favorite albums ever. So it's, uh, it's dead symbolic. We also covered a song with Epica from this album. And it was to dedicate uh, that because uh, Chuck Schuldiner is one of my inspirations and uh, uh, rest in peace. Uh, but uh, beautiful album. And uh, I th yeah, like I said, it's one of my top 10 albums, metal albums of all times. <laughs> it's mine as well. Ooh. Next one, Nightwish. Ah, yes. One. yes, that's the new one, Human versus uh, Nature. Yes, it's... Uh, I must say I, I really like it a lot. Uh, I know that some people uh, some people like it, some people don't, but I was the ones that like it a lot. I played the album I think uh, like ten or or eleven times, which is for me a lot for for a new album to play. And um, yeah, I think very strong songs, good melodies, and I also like also the 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 film score CD a lot, which has very beautiful melodies. So I like both albums, the 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 band album and the the film score album. Oh, all right. Next one, Therion. Ah, yes, also Therion, a uh, uh, great band and uh, has influenced also Epica because they were one of the, the founders of this style. And uh, uh, for, for example, to make a Therion is one of the best uh, uh, songs in the symphonic metal ever written, I think. So it's uh, for, for us, and for me personally, a very important band uh, that have uh, had a big influence on our career. Have you have you listened their last album, Leviathan, yet or not? That one I haven't heard yet. It's Jack, good. It's one of the their best albums. Ah. One of their best. <laughs> yeah, because I heard uh, it was more catchy again, and uh, that, that they go a bit back to the roots. So I'm I'm very curious to to listen, but I still didn't, didn't have the time yet. But I have to write it down that the next fitness session I play this one because sometimes I, I think like which album did I still have to play and this is one of them, so I'm gonna <laughs> write it down that I don't forget. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> next one, it's a Brazilian band, Angra, Holy Land. Ah yes, a great band I must say, and uh, very very good musicians, great singer. So it's uh, also one of the best bands from Brazil together with Sepultura and uh, Soulfly and uh, Shaman. So these Chris. are my... Chris Yoon <laughs> also, that, that, that's the, the more brutal one, <laughs> but very good. Yeah, <laughs> good, very, very good bands from Brazil. A lot of bands. Next one, Nevermore, that hard ah, thing. That... Yeah, also Rest in Peace. Uh, rest in Peace, the, the very good band as well, very melodic and uh, uh, also, one of my favorite bands already since I was a teenager. Uh, I already bought some of their albums uh, since my, my childhood. So, for me, also one of those bands that has influenced me uh, in my whole career. Nice. And the last one, uh, this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that album is still very dear to me. It's, uh, I think, one of my favorite albums of my career where I'm involved in. And um, uh, I think we, we, with After Forever, we had really uh, our very inspireful, inspired uh, period. And uh, that was, uh, I think, also from Sander, he always says that, uh, that this is our best album we ever made together. And uh, that I agree, it was, uh, yeah, very strong album, good melodies. Flo Janssen, of course, uh, amazing singer. 
So I'm very proud, uh, I must say, on this album. And so everybody who doesn't know After Forever yet, I uh, would say, listen to this one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. Around a year ago, uh, or more, uh, it was released a book from Epica, a book from Epica, uh, The Essence of Epica. Uh, yes. Do you have plans to release this book here in Brazil? Because um, in these days, nowadays, the book market in Brazil is very warm. Have, have ah. you had plans to release this book in Brazil? I haven't heard about these plans yet because I'm not involved in, uh, in, in where the, the, the company wants to release this book because we uh, made the story for them and uh, they made all the work for the book. So um, even though we were pretty much a lot involved in all the pictures and the, the story itself, all the work for the book was done by, by another company outside of Epica. They, they, they do also a book for Camelot now. now and. They did an open book, I think, yeah. and that. Uh, so, um, if if the books sell really well in, in general in uh, in Brazil, then I can uh, talk to our to our to them and tell them if there is an option to uh, translate it in uh, Portuguese. So that would be really cool. I I hope so. All right, I hope so too. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the Brazilian tour is scheduled for December. Uh, are yeah. you afraid that this pandemic situation uh, could change the plans in any way? Yeah, it can at any time change the plans, that's for sure. But uh, uh, yeah, at a certain point, you have to make plannings. And if it's not happening, you then you have to postpone it till an, a later date. But uh, yeah, there's two options. It's either making plans and and maybe they're not going to happen and or do nothing. And uh, yeah, both have their advantages and disadvantages. So, um, uh, yeah, this this uh, uh, producer Marcos, he wanted to book us, and he uh, we said, yeah, let's give it a, sh a shot, and uh, hopefully it's happening. But yeah, I know also that the situation in Brazil at the moment is is not going well. So I don't know how how it how it will develop in in half a year time. But um, yeah, let's see, let's see. When I interview you three years ago, I ask you. Uh, I, now I want to see if you change your answer or not. Which <laughs> band do you think would make a good cover, a cool cover of any of Epica's songs? Ah, uh, I, I have no idea which band I said three years ago, but uh, I would uh, like to see Opeth doing a song of Epica. <laughs> That's the same answer. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Listening to Omega today, uh, I thought maybe Jimmy Borger could record some epic songs. There are parts very similar. I, I yeah, think. they have also very yeah. symphonic elements. Yeah, that uh, and they, they they became softer over the years. So uh, yeah, it is. But then it's maybe not so much of a challenge if, if there's already many similarities between the bands. I would see a, I like to see a band who is very different take, uh, doing an Epica cover. <laughs> ah, all right. So, Mark, thank you for this interview. And I have one last thing to say to you. Yes. I am from Sesso Music website, and you recorded for us an invitation video for our online festival we did last year for the Animal Calls, you know. So ah, I yeah, want yeah. to thank you for that. You're well, welcome. We appreciate it. Okay? <laughs> cool. Thank you very much. When they run yeah, about animals, I always want to help because uh, animals, uh, for me, it's very important that uh, that in the world, whatever we can, that we help animals. I have also myself three dogs, six cats, and uh, I'm also involved in some some shelters to uh, to raise some money and and do uh, to help them giving a better life. So every bits and pieces uh, makes a difference. So I would also say to people. Uh, wherever you can, try to help your animals in the neighborhood because every help makes a huge difference. All right. Thank you very much once again. Let's support Thank Animal Call and yeah. see you in Brazil, I hope. <laughs> I hope so too. Bye-bye, <laughs> Mark. All the yes. best. Good, good evening. Bye-bye. Oh, you too. Bye-bye.